Welcome back to Thriving with Autism. I'm Kathy Flynn. Instead of Wednesday's q and I want to take the time today to read the words of an autistic adult, Mateo Rojas Halt. He gives a voice and perspective to many, many children on the autism spectrum that may never be this expressive. These are his words, quote, a lot of autistic people get overstimulated by their peers and too much activity and sounds during the day. Our breaks may look different than what neurotypical folks consider to be a break. It was exhausting never getting an actual break to recharge my batteries and regulate myself because I was constantly drained from forced interaction. Play turned into stress. Social interaction with peers was work for me, not relief. And if I was always burnt out with no time to actually breathe in the way I needed to, it only fueled meltdowns and outbursts since I was dysregulated. And I couldn't regulate myself in other ways too that looked autistic, so it was assumed to be bad. I would spin myself in circles outside. Nope, I was playing wrong. I would pick up and examine the texture and patterns of rocks. Nope, I was playing wrong. What is playing wrong? What does play really mean and how is it being defined and by whom? I wish more people realized autistic kids are also kids and people forget to let us just be kids. We deserve space, we deserve to breathe, we deserve to just relax and not have to be learning skills in every part of the day." End quote. Pretty eye-opening, right? This was my response back to Mateo. I'm incredibly sad that you always saw yourself in therapy and the adults in your life did not give you the breaks that you needed to be you and to relax. I'm a special ed teacher and I've been in the field with children with autism and their families for over 12 years. I work with many children who will never speak. However, we do give them a means of communication. We do help them find their inner voice and we do definitely respect their needs and their downtime. I teach with ABA strategies, but our whole foundation for teaching rests on what our children love and how to pair ourselves with those items so that our children are motivated to sit and interact and request. I thank you for giving autism a perspective and a voice, but I want you to know that there are teachers out there who care very deeply for their students and want them to thrive and develop and progress. I want my students to want to be in my classroom. And believe me, if we drill them with skills all day long, they would become aggressive and escape artists who want nothing more than to be left alone. They would never be motivated enough to sit down with us at all. That is the opposite of pairing. Just know that there are good teachers in the world and they take a lot of pride in their work. My students aren't bad, they're not broken, they need to be respected, motivated, and supported. And letting them be them in their own unique way is the essence of my work. There are two very important points I wanna make from this exchange. It is super important to keep your child busy at home with various demands, skills, and play. They should not have constant downtime and be left to just stim and be on a device or watching TV all day long. With that said, it is also super important to give them downtime in their day, often and unstructured. Children with autism need to feel like they are not constantly drilled with demands or playing the wrong way. Let them play in their quirky sensory ways, even if it is shaking a string in front of their face or flapping their arms. In my classroom, we respect children's interests and that is why pairing is so important. But we also give them the downtime that they need to just be them. We have a rule of thumb to work for seven to 15 minutes and then give a two minute break. At home, depending on your situation, work with your child for the same seven to 15 minutes at a time and then of course their breaks can be longer but it is important to set up some work time at home so your child has the expectation of working on sitting, requesting, and learning about language and play. They will make so much more progress if you get involved in their learning and make time to work on skills. But have a good balance. 
Give your child time to explore with the things that interest him or her and don't force situations that may be very uncomfortable for him or her. If you want to find more about pairing and how we use pairing to connect with children with autism, click on the link in the description to get my free guide. Whether your child is nonverbal or not, pairing is the number one way to get your child to want to sit with you and be motivated enough to learn skills and make requests. Until next time, I'm Kathy Flynn, and this is Thriving with Autism.